Hi, in this video we will have a look at SQL deletion triggers. In Power Automate, there is no existing SQL deletion trigger available. So here I am, here I am logged on in Power Automate and I am looking the SQL Server connection. I can see the triggers, there are two triggers available. One is called when an item is created and the other one is when an item is modified. So here you can see there is no trigger for deletion available. Fortunately, there is a workaround for this, which I will explain in this video. So for the demo, I have a SQL data here. The, my table is called employee and I have got three rows here. One is called the learning unit code and the ID. And this ID I'm storing in SharePoint as well. So if I take you back to the SharePoint list called demo one, you can see here, I just replicated the same data. So the plan is whenever I delete a SQL record, I need to delete the SharePoint record as well. So for SharePoint and the SQL, I got a common unique identifier, which is called the SQL ID. So I'm utilizing the SQL ID. You can see these, these are the IDs coming from the SQL here. See that? So hopefully when I delete this, I can look for the SharePoint record and delete the relevant uh, record from the SharePoint list called demo one. Okay, so for this, we need to build two flows here. So the first thing I'm going to build here is, well, there are three things we need to do here. The, we need to build two flows and then we need to configure a SQL trigger also, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm going to use an endpoint uh, to uh, which we can execute later. So for that, I'm going to look for HTTP here. And select the request when an HTTP request is received. I'm going to create a small payload schema here, which is the SQL ID. So my plan is I'm going to use ID. That's my payload is going to be. Okay, so you can see your ID type is integer. That's it. The next step, I'm going to use the SharePoint connector. Okay. I'm looking for get items. My list name is called demo one. I'm going to apply the filter query here. So my column name is called SQL ID. So the plan is I'm going to use the filter query as SQL ID is equal to. It's coming from the trigger, which is the ID here. Here it is. Yeah. The next thing is I can use the delete item step of the SharePoint action step, which is again, select the site name and the list name. And that ID is coming from the get items. Okay, that's going to up, put an apply to each year. Uh, we know that that's a unique identifier. It's always going to be one record. Okay, so let me save this. So the plan is delete. SharePoint report. Okay, that's our first flow now. Okay, I'm going to replicate this same type again. And this is where I'm going to build my Oh, let me think. So that's endpoint now, so we can delete this. Yeah, I think, sorry, we only need one flow here. We don't need two flows. I don't know why, why I said that. So this is delete SharePoint record, okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to do here is, I'm going to go to the SQL server, and 
I need to configure my endpoint here using the triggers. That's the plan. So under my employee table, these are the three records you can see here. So the plan is whenever we delete this, we want to trigger and execute the HTTP endpoint. So for that, there is something called triggers here. See that? So there is a bit of a code we need to execute here. I'll explain the code here. This is what it's going to look like. So use the table, use employee. That's my ta table name. Then uh, we need to set the standard, uh, you know, the qualifications for the SQL, uh, the triggers here, which is a set quoted identifier on, set and signals on. Then here, this is the main part, which is create trigger. The database is, uh, the trigger name is called TRG is the trigger name, TRG I just chosen as, then I called, called it as employee delete. So this one you can name whatever you want on the database of my employee. That's what employee it is yeah, here for deletion. So that's the trigger. Then I need to declare a variable name, VAR variable ID and the ID is from deleted. Yeah. So the plan is whenever I delete an employee, I need to capture the ID immediately. So the way I need to do here is using the select, declare a variable here, int, and saying the ID, this is the ID here, see that ID here? So that's the ID I'm capturing here under the variable to store from deletion, yeah? So I know that record is going to get delete, this trigger is going to get execute, then the plan is to select that ID storing in a variable name called VIR ID. That's all it is, yeah? The next thing we need to do here is these are the standard one declare object as int then a response text if you want a response from the endpoint that's what that's for I'm I'm not I haven't put in response there if I want I, I can put that I'm not going to utilize uh, use that um, output in this demo here the next thing is declare at body here and at body uh, var max so let me uh, let me get that into there then the um, There it is. Yeah. So once I declare the body, I need to pass the ID is equal to uh, SDR VAR ID. Yeah. So, so let me take back to the flow again. Edit the flow. So here, see that ID? That side we need to pass. So the plan is, I'm going to make it small case. Yeah, I don't think it's caps case or small case, but I'm going to use the same, um, same as other um, parameter there. So that's a body. I'm going to pass the ID, and I'm converting into a string here. Yeah. So uh, str of var id. So this var id is an integer. Remember but I need to convert uh, that into a string to pass into the JSON format. So that's the JSON format, which I'm constructing to pass pass into my payload, yeah? Then my flow API link it is here, yeah? That's my flow link. So uh, here, look that, uh, so that's ID is an int, yeah? But in the payload, uh, it's a JSON. That's the reason I'm using str, uh, the string conversion, okay? I'll put this, um, uh, this uh, trigger code under my video description right the next thing is i'm going to use the endpoint here so let me delete this endpoint okay and uh, going back to my flow again copy this once you saved this flow you should be able to get an endpoint here so i'm going to save this okay going back here and uh, paste that that's that then then these are the standard ones here again executing uh, you know all these um, elements related to the endpoint execution it is yeah so i'm going to uh, click on execute so what's going that what's that going to do is it's uh, it executed and says command commands completed successfully so if i refresh this trigger now hopefully we should be able to see our trigger here here it is TRG employee delete yeah that's the one it is yeah but remember when you do this you might get an error 
so for that what i did then is i need to uh, go through the microsoft documentation called oily automation procedures okay i will put this link also in my video description so for this what we need to do here is we need to execute this without this this won't work so this use that endpoint uh, you know the oily automation procedures we need to turn it on actually so by default it is not enabled so this is a technique you need to do it just copy this and execute under your sql server i'll show you what i did here so here it is that's what i did i just copied and executed that so that's another thing also you need to do yeah so without that it won't work so i would advise first you need to go and do this then do the store procedures and then execute that it's already now okay so what we can do now is i'm going to go back to my flow now click on the back button now okay let me save this again click the back button right now flow is ready now to get triggered the plan now is I'm going to go to SQL Server now. You might have, you know, a front end of some other application in a real scenario which you can go and delete it. Yeah, delete the records. So for the demonstration purpose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this record here and uh, I'm interested in this record to delete now the testing record which is 788. Yeah. So remember the 788 record already exists in my SharePoint list also. Let me go back to my SharePoint list. See the testing. 780 that's a sql id also there yeah okay so let me go back to sql server select that right click and say delete okay that's deleted now let me close that to verify it right click and say select you can see that's deleted okay so go back to my flow review that succeeded now so if i open that flow run history i can see here my payload here first and then looking for the get items and deleting it so here in the payload see 788 been passed in from the sql server then in the get items i'm filtering it and it found the record and deleted it hopefully if i take you back here the record is gone now it's deleted now yeah so this is the way you can you know implement a trigger mechanism for the sql server because by by default, the standard SQL connector, it doesn't uh, have it, you know. So the way to work around is to configure a SQL trigger, which is here, which is under the table. We created a SQL trigger. We set the endpoint. Yeah. So let me go and modify that and show you the script again. We put the endpoint and we pass the ID, which is quite important here in the payload. Then only we can find the relevant record and delete from SharePoint or in a dataverse or any other or in an excel sheet or wherever it is you can go and you know delete that and then uh, that's that's the configuration you need and also then you need uh, you know remember to configure this which is quite important also otherwise the oily automation procedures won't work you need to enable this yeah hope this video is useful thank you for watching